Hey guys, I just wanted to make a video to talk about how we fished Beta Knock in this most recent Beta Knock video as well as how I fished it in the past. So I'm going to break it down into three categories. Kind of. I'm going to talk about the general contour that we fish and how we pick apart that contour, like where specifically we put our tip ups. And then I'll talk about how we set up our tip ups. So a little bit of background about the trip. We got there Thursday morning and then we left Sunday morning. We stayed in a sleeper shanty so we were there 24-7 fishing the entire time. Um, we pretty much used tip-ups exclusively throughout the trip and there were four of us, me, Colton, Caleb, and Alex, so that meant we could have 12 lines in the water the whole time. So as far as the general contour that we like to fish, um, what I like to do on Beta Knox, I set up in kind of higher percentage areas where I think the fish are going to wind up at some point. Beta Knox doesn't have a ton of structure like a Mille Lacs does. It's got like four reefs on the north end of the bay. Uh, it's got the narrows and then it's got the banana down by Escanaba. But it's not stuff where you can like hop from one to the other to one to the next. Um, and land on fish the whole time. So for me it's always kind of been a waiting game, just set up in a spot where you know fish are going to come through, or there's a, at least a really high chance that the fish are going to come through and wait it out. And that's kind of how I've caught all my big fish there over the years. Um, one of the contours that lets you do this and I really like to fish is reefs. And this is no secret when it comes to walleye fishing, everybody fishes reefs. Especially for sleeper shanties because it offers such a wide range of depths. Uh, where we were, I think it was about 13 foot on the top side of the reef and about 26 foot on the bottom side of the reef. So, like we said, the reefs have a wide range of depths. And what that's going to allow me to do where I set my tip ups is stay with the fish throughout the course of the day. So, throughout the majority of the daytime, the walleyes are going to be out in the flat away from the reef in the deeper water. Um, and so those fish are going to be out there throughout the course of the day and as it gets closer to night they're going to come up closer to the break on the side of the reef and then at transition time and into night they're going to come up onto the reef. So that's why I like to fish the reefs is because I can take my tip ups, put them out there in that flat and follow the fish up onto the reef at night. For us in this, uh, in the most recent video where we had four guys, we had 12 tip ups. So we didn't really have to take our tip ups and move them with. We just basically made the decision that we're going to cover all of it with our 12 tip ups and just leave them in. So we had tip ups out at the flat, you know, out away from the break in the flat. We had tip ups by the break. We even had a one or two on the break. Those were mostly for pike. Um, and then we had them kind of right at the top where the transition is, and then out in the in the reef itself. So now we'll go to the contour map here to kind of talk about how we break down the reef and where specifically on the reef we put the tip ups. Because when you put these tip ups out you want to be really really specific and kind of have a reason or a purpose why you're doing it. So we'll talk about that in the contour. So this contour is a reef from Mille Lacs Lake. This reef has everything that the reef we were fishing has and highlights some really key points I want to make. As you can see out here on the north side of it you got your 26 to 27 foot depth. Down here in the bottom, you kind of got a pinch between the shoreline steep break and the reef break that's uh, about 21 or 22, depending on where you are here. And then up here at the top, you got, it looks like 13 foot here, 15 here. Um, so the top of it's pretty much 15 foot. And then you got some tighter breaks up here along this edge. You got a couple of fingers with what I'm going to call ditches. And then a little bit tighter break down here at the bottom. Alright, so when I look at this reef, I pretty much have two ways that jump out to me that I want to fish this. Either I'm going to fish it from the south side down here, or I'm going to fish it from the kind of northeast side up here. The reason I say this for the south side is if you look here, you got this funnel, right? And the fish, when they come in here, they're going to swim in like this, and then they're going to swim through here and they're going to get pinched. A lot of times they're not going to go up during the day, they're not going to want to go up on this reef, and they're not going to want to go into the shoreline, obviously. So this is kind of a high percentage area where the fish are going to filter through. The argument over here for the northeast side is it's a big flat. I mean, walleyes like to hang out in flats during the day. It's, you know, so there's a pretty good chance to see there. You'll see fish in the flat too. 
Now, what I'm going to focus on here is kind of my favorite. The the reef we were fishing has this has this trait about it, and this is what I've really keyed in on bait and knock is with these ditches that I talked about that go from the deep water to the reef, and they're kind of uh, like this one here is perfect because it's more gradual. You see how it just kind of comes up. Brake lines are a lot tighter here. This one here is kind of a gradual slope. So I'm going to key in on this section of the reef right here um, with that gradual ditch. And how we're going to fish this is we're going to kind of fish it in three tiers. Throughout the course of the day I'm going to expect a lot of the fish to be out here in this 26, 27 foot flat. That's where I'm going to focus a lot of my attention if I'm a single person. As you get to about two hours from dark, I'm going to take those tip-ups and I'm going to run them back into right here at the bottom of this guy. And then as I get maybe an hour before dark, um, sun's starting to get close to going down, I'm going to take those tip-ups and I'm going to lay them right here. I'm going to cover this ditch mouth. So basically any, if they're coming up this ditch, they're going to, get my, they're going to run into my tip-up. That's how I'm going to fish this and that's how I fish bait and knock. Now like I said, we had 12 tip-ups in. So we could cover all three zones at one time. But the most success we had was right here at the top of the reef, right where the ditch, that gradual ditch comes and meets the flat at the top of the reef. Um, in transition time, that's when we had the majority of our action. We had flags there throughout the course of the day. Um, whether they're all walleyes, I don't know. But that's where we had the best luck. Say, we're nighttime fishing. It's past transition time. It's been dark for a while. Where are we going to put our tip ups on top of the reef if you're going to target that? Well, I've always been a fan of the flattest stuff you can find on top of the reef. So I'm probably going to target this spot here. I'm going to target this spot here. And then maybe this spot here or this spot here. Those are the kind of areas that I key in on. Um, for nighttime fishing. Now the next thing I want to talk about is how we set our tip-ups up to fish this kind of contour. When you're setting the tip-ups you want to be really precise and have a purpose for each one that you're setting. So I'm talking precise with not just with location but purpose with like your bait choice, your hook choice and stuff like that. So first and foremost you gotta have fluorocarbon leaders that's a general rule of thumb when you're walleye fishing. But then for hooks, you can have your trebles, you can have your glow hooks, you can have spoons, you can have jigs, you can have all kinds of different stuff. And color is a big thing. Um, so a good variety of that is always good. Next thing you have to choose is your bait. Um, so you have little sucker, big sucker, um, little shiner, big shiner, fat heads, rosies, all the different kinds of minnows that you can have. You want to have a variety of all these different things. And the other variable with it is the depth that you're setting your tip up. I think that's maybe even the most crucial part of it. So what I like to do is anywhere from a hand length, so like 8 inches to 3 foot off the bottom. I'm not afraid to raise them up 2-3 feet, especially on bait and knock. Uh, you can see in the video here, this tip up here was in about 22 foot of water. And I'm pulling that about 2 feet off the bottom. This one here was in about... 20 foot of water and I have that one probably a foot off the bottom and then the one this one here which is the one that I caught my biggest fish on is in about 15 foot of water it looks like I got that one about two and a half feet up off the bottom so you can see I'm not afraid to raise them up and it works out especially on these big girls on bait and knock they are not afraid to come up and get it so my point was saying you gotta have a purpose to all these is if you just go throw it down the hole and don't know what you really did or just set it like oh close enough when you start getting one tip up that's going up it's one it's hard to replicate it and two you don't understand the pattern so a lot of times what will happen is you'll have one tip up that is way hotter than the others so then in my mind I go okay how far off the bottom do I have it set what's the contour what's the bait what's the color all that different stuff that can go into it and I start adjusting my other tip ups to mimic that tip up and I think that's a pretty good pretty good way you just kind of funnel it down and dial in on that pattern. The last thing is just a couple of tips um, from stuff that I've learned on Beta Mac. Please get Navionics or some other contour app um, and then a depth finder whether it be your sonar that tells you the depth or if it's just your old-fashioned uh, sinker weight that you measure it with. Whatever you want to do, however you want to do it, 
Reason for that is, is your GPS on your phone isn't always perfect. And a lot of times, in my opinion, 10 yards one way, this way, or 10 yards that way can make all the difference in the world when it comes to, especially walleye fishing, uh, around breaks and on reefs. So you just want to make sure that you're verifying that the GPS on your phone has you in the right spot and the contour is actually where it says it is. And just in general, don't be afraid to change stuff up and, and try different presentations. Don't be afraid to change things. Um, if you're not catching them, you're not catching them. So you might as well try something, right? That's what I was talking about with different hooks and different minnows and stuff like that. And just on bait and knock, it's really a waiting game. It's it's you can you gotta keep a level mind. <laughs> Some days it'll grind you down because you go up to bait and knock, you're so hyped up, you see all these big fish coming through the ice, all the optimism, and then you get there and nothing. And you start doubting yourself, and you start getting down on yourself, and you just gotta keep a level mind, as silly as it sounds. Um, just ask Colton and I. <laughs> you can see in the videos we both are pretty roller coaster along the way. Hope this was helpful to you guys. If you liked it, go ahead and like, subscribe. Just kind of lets us know that we're doing what we're supposed to. If you don't like it, I guess tell us we suck and dislike it. That's fine. I got thick skin. I can take it. Thanks for watching, guys, and good luck out in the ice.